I'm going to show you how to kind of get this effect in post-production. Now, obviously this was done with lighting, um, so the effect's not going to be quite there, but I'll show you how you can get pretty close. We started here, I started kind of messing around, and I know I can get a lot better, but we are trying to get something a little bit closer to this. So let's just jump in and let's see my step-by-step -step process. So the first thing I would do is retouch the image. The only thing I've really done is we have a natural window light uh, on this side, and on this side we have a strobe popping. So two lights just to give them that orange pop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is throw my crop on, add my treatment, and just do the basic retouch. So let's just do that really fast. Okay, now that we have like a loose retouch, just did like a loose skin, now let's really dive into the treatment. So I'm gonna go really hard with this treatment and actually do another contrast layer on top of these moves that I already use. Again, if you wanna know how to use these moves, go to my video, link in the description about color correction. I'm gonna hit this significantly harder by using Legacy. Again, I don't want to break it apart where it's like this. I want to take it to the point just before that. Maybe I darken it. I do want this to get very dark and moody. But I don't want it to be too, too crazy. So I like this. Now I'm just going to drop the opacity until it becomes normal. And even if you go to luminosity down here, it does take the effect off a little bit. Normal. Luminosity, normal, luminosity. I'm just gonna drop this opacity again. And now I have these brightness layers. And these are just, you know, curves to, to boost the mids and then the same thing to uh, bring down the highlights. So first thing I'm gonna do is just even this background out. Big curves layer and with a big brush big 30% and just kind of paste it in. That's a little too heavy, so let's go to like 15%. And even a bigger brush. Yeah, it just darkens this right down. It makes the background just a little bit more even. And again, I'm just trying something new, a different technique using the same kind of workflow that I always use. And because I want this to be a lot darker, I'm going to darken it down as well. I'm going to deal with the color and the hue and saturation. But for now, I'm just really messing with getting something across here. And then I'm even going to darken in big strips in the same spot in the background. Just holding shift, clicking back and forth. Do the same thing down here. Matching kind of the the light that I have going across his face. Getting a little blotchy, but we can fix this after. And now I'm gonna do the same thing just with the brighter curve. So I'm actually lightening right here. A little too crazy, I'm gonna start this over. I want it to be more of a strip going right across here. Again, I'm holding shift down while I do this, and I'm gonna go with the bigger one just across here. And then, just powder puff in his eye with a little bit more. I'm probably gonna do another curves layer. Again, underneath my contrast layers to kind of boost it up and just paint it in. And then I'm gonna do a crazy one under all of these because I'd love it to not be so, so crunchy in the back. So see that detail? So what actually needs to happen here, I'm gonna leave this, is where we darkened, it actually ate into his jacket. So I gotta bring that back. It's a little complicated if you're not used to this workflow. So the key is to just experiment mess around and this is the only th way you're going to learn new techniques is if you spend some time in Photoshop and do stuff like this. Okay, now that I have this, I can bring this back. So back to our brightness layer, big brush, 
and then just brush it in. I don't want it to be too crazy. I just want to see a little bit of the detail in his jacket. Just enough so you can see he has a blazer on. Like that's too much, so dial it back. I like just that little subtle thing. You can also bring out his eyes just a little bit more. And maybe just a little bit of detail in his hair. But again, paint it in so you're just a little too far. So now I'm just gonna bring back the parts that went a little too overboard. And see, and now this is much nicer. At least you can see detail. Okay, we're getting closer. So now I'm gonna take another curves layer and instead of bringing it down here, I'm gonna bring it down right from the top. And you see it gives it this nice natural, like a fade out almost. And now what I'm gonna do is with another soft brush, 11% is great. I'm just gonna paste in these highlights a little bit more. And you can tell it's a nice even come down. Just enough to darken. Let's just take a look back at that reference. See, that's cool. It's getting closer, but it is cool how this is just jet black. So let's bring this down. Again, not trying to totally rip off this image, but getting pretty close so the client can have something he likes. Pretty cool. I'm gonna do one more of those to darken it down in here. See, that's getting very cool. And then you almost just want to paint it back here. You still see the jacket, same shift and click across, get those nice straight lines. And then what I'm gonna do with this, cause it's a little too heavy, is just dial this back. And then you see the hue and saturation. I just brought this down a little bit, like minus 25. And then what I'm gonna do is group all of these together. Cause this is almost like our treatment. Pretty much the whole thing. Kind of deal with this issue here. It just looks a little crunchy and a little strange in here. So what I want to do is open a mask up here with the brush, low opacity. Just come over the forehead and open it up just a little bit. Make it a little bit more believable. That's really cool. Almost looks a little too bright in here. So then we just open this up See the parts that really made it brighter, which was this, and then bring that opacity down. Cool, and now that you see we've done it, all these crazy lifts and moves, now is the time to do another dodge and burn layer because I would love to just fix up the blotches in his face around here. So I'm gonna do that really quick. Cool, now that, that's, now that that's finished and we got a little bit closer, I still think it's just a little too much. You know, so what I wanna do is give it a little bit of a boost, group everything together, and then again, do one more opacity sweep and just dial it back. And then from here, one more hit of contrast, just to give it a little bit more of a snap. I'm gonna do a little bit of color in the background. I just wanna make his skin tone a little better, even though it's orange and it started off real wacky. I'm just adding a little bit of cyan and a little bit of magenta here, just to dial it and make it slightly less orange. It gives a nice little funk color too, which I'm very into. Now from here, what I wanna do, there's a little bit of banding just in the background. So I'm about to adjust the background with grain. And if you want to know how to do my grain treatment, you can check that out in one of my previous videos. The link is in my description. But you can see the grains help the banding quite a bit. It actually looks very cool like that. Even just like that. I feel like it's a little too much in here still. So above this, I'm going to actually do it below because this will happen before all of the layers. You see I have a lot more leverage. Even as I bring this up, it looks a lot nicer in the forehead. So again, very, very light opacity brush, something like a four or five, and just tap it in here, just to open it up, making it look not so orange. And then I wanna do the same thing with this, just to make the lip, bottom lip not so dominant. 
And it's not, these aren't crazy moves. These are just tiny little subtle things that I see when I'm wrapping it up. But there you go. That's essentially it. Um, actually, I would love to boost his his necklace here. So all I'm gonna do underneath everything is with a big brightness and contrast, go legacy, give a big hit. Again, I'm just looking at the jewelry here. <clears throat> I wanna make the jewelry sing before it gets too crazy. And now what I wanna do is take another curves layer and boost this. Cool. Now what I'm gonna do is group these, add a mask, delete them, and now let's see what it looks like when I paint it on the jewelry. Uh, it's pretty cool. I like the, I like that little effect. Just makes that pop a little bit more. And there we go. Looks really cool. Something I wouldn't normally do. And you can see when you compare it to the original, it's pretty close. But I didn't spend too much time looking back and forth. How did he do this? What did he do this? Just kind of drew inspiration from it and then let it do my own thing. He sees a big difference from the one I just randomly messed around with to how he finished. I still prefer this one, to be honest. I love the, the lighting and you can see when you shape light, it's always gonna look way better than messing around in post-production. But it's cool. This, this job you'll see coming out soon. I worked with the artist David Shine and we tried to get a bunch of different photographs so it looked like a series of photographers shot this so i like that idea i like treating this like an exercise and i hope you learn something from just messing around and having fun thanks a lot for watching guys my name is cory vanderplu at cory photo on twitter and instagram happy shooting